Sort of all, welcome to the Pro Fun of a Podcast, dude. Thanks so much for having me, man. Anytime, anytime. Well, uh, to, to start the story off, I actually found your profile on one of your mountain bike reels. And I saw this uh, this guy, like, the, I go, oh, this is funny. Who's this guy? And I went to your profile. I saw it. I could hear this African accent. I'm like, this is cool. So, and then I'm like, this guy doesn't ride mountain bike at all. He's a rally driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just getting creative there with that post, you know. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I do like to cycle, but rally is my sport, you know. I came mm. into through a, like a young driver talent search called FIA Rally Star and yeah, it basically completely changed my life with the winning that event and yeah. now I'm rallying across the world it's uh, it's really incredible well well to start it off for the people that are joining and that uh, that don't know you elevator pitch who is Max Smart okay so yeah I'm a South African I'm 21 years old I grew up racing motorbikes you know I rode motocross uh like pretty much my whole life, you know, been obsessed with bikes since the age of like four, you know, and um, then from there, I always thought rally was a really cool sport and I just never had the chance to get into it because obviously it's really expensive and oh. I love the simulators. I play on like Dirt Rally 2.0, even the older ones, like in 2009, the Dirt Rally 2, all those rally games and I'd be like, wow, like this sport is just yep. mad and then eventually one day, um, my dad, he saw that, uh, there was a young driver talent search going on, uh, mm -hmm. across the entire world where they were picking one driver from every continent of the world to go, to get put into this program called FIA Rally Star. And mm -hmm. basically it was just a complete raw talent search, you know, mm -hmm. they weren't looking for guys that were already rally drivers. Um, and you know, they were, they were mainly looking for people who just had like complete talent, you know? And we, my dad saw this through a mail from MSA and one of the ways you could enter was actually on the simulator. And, uh, then I, we, we went for it, you know, we went for it in every possible way that, uh, I could qualify. There were different events, but basically I actually came so close on all the events to qualify. You had to win one of them and I'd either make a mistake or I wouldn't push hard enough because I didn't want to make a mistake because I was learning, you know, and, um, then eventually I got put in as a wild card. And we were racing something called a cross cart, which is like a small buggy with a 700 CC superbike engine. And it was on like a, like a mixed surface stage, so half dirt and half tarmac. And there I just found the balance like so much better and, uh, just literally use the natural talents to, you know, win an event uh, against guys from all over Africa, you know? Um, and yeah, that was, that was amazing. And yeah, since then we. We've been, uh, we went into last year, which was my first year ever rallying and had, uh, four rallies all across Europe, which were all like, you know, different in their like unique ways of learning different techniques and, and things. But basically like the season actually started off to a bit of a rocky start. Um, <laughs> and like I had a, like a few mistakes and had some crashes, you know, because I was like trying as hard as I could and, uh like still needed to learn so much, you know, I had the pace, you know, but I didn't have that consistency on top of it, you know? And, um, then eventually after a, a bad crash in, in Austria, I had to like re-strategize everything, you know, and went into, went to the UK and did like a, like a proper intense, like two month training program working on main goal was consistency. And, um, then from there went to, into the rest of the 2023 season and just progress stage by stage, you know, we were getting faster and faster and throughout of that, through all of that, we, we didn't touch the car and, you know, super consistent. And, uh, that was another thing that helped us now in, 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 in Sweden, you know, yeah. dude, uh, it's, it's such a, it's such an awesome story. And, and I think most of us that are in the motorsport world and that, and actually could enjoy the content that is like, we all saw the Gran Turismo movie and how like the world of people on simulators are now becoming so talented that 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 that, that con pro progression to real life racing is now kind of a more seamless of a transition and it gives a good entry point and your story is exactly that like i think let's just continue this path on get that wrc title and we get you a movie as well <laughs> exactly man no it is it is incredible man even like rat that make the the city united equipment such as thrustmaster yes yeah. before yes yeah, yeah. Before I even stepped in a rally car in real life, they actually decided to back me and sponsor me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible, you know? 
No, it's it's a, it's an awesome platform to start. You were you were met, one of the things you mentioned at the start was the the barrier of entry and the cost. Like we all know, motorsport if it's two wheels, four wheels, it's it's a big. You need a big wallet to be able to compete at it, go, go be competitively, or you need all the luck in the world for the right people to to see you at that point. And to have a small, because I can go now, and I'm, I'm not, so that's a starting point, and you can go and take a lot, and you can buy a nice little entry level kit and whatever, and you can connect it to your laptop or your your PlayStation, and you can start learning the the dynamics and that, and it's so realistic. And the more you get into it, you can actually save up. And where I can't go and go buy a rally spec car, and there's no roads here. You can quickly go and learn where you can ride anywhere in the world, different types of terrains, all in the comfort of your home, like with the simulator. And 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 you get guys like Thrustmaster that like before like you can have a, a normal pedal box and a, a pedal box that goes in your rally car and the one that you have in your 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 your, your sim rig they very very similar in that sense. Yeah. No, it is. It's honestly incredible. It just makes it like accessible, you know. And uh, just just to learn the basics, that's also like a huge thing that I used, you know, just yeah. to get that like I don't know coordination, you know, of your muscles and and everything that muscle memory um yeah it's it's incredible you know i still sim today no uh, so so now obviously you still sim and now you bought the this if i really search that you got that competition and then i like i followed the whole like dude i'm uh, i still remember like being like barely be able, able to walk in that and joining my dad on stage rallies going to Salby, going to the sassel rally going following the rallies and they've been watching this and now seeing guys in south africa actually progress to that level that got that's why i'm like super stoked on your journey i'm like cool we've got a new driver that we can back we can we, let, let's progressing in that level now you said you moved from the sim and the, the rally sweden was your fifth fifth rally ever and then the, that uh, to progress in that so what is your journey now look like for the rest of the year because now you you mentioned okay cool you you got in the training and i saw you like you, you did the training program in the UK that helped you a hell of a lot. What is that journey for winning the FI um, Rally Star? Like, what, what does that entail for the going forward of the rest of the year? So for the rest of the year, this year we are uh, competing in the full Junior World Rally Championship, you know. Oh, so awesome. for Sweden was the first round and yeah, it took yeah. positives from it. And also like showed some really good pace, you know, in some of right. the stages we 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 came second in the power stage. We came third in another stage, and some other stages like top uh, six, top ten. You know, like uh, it's really good to show that pace, yeah. especially uh, against such a like high level of competition. We got nineteen drivers in the championship this year, and they all you know are are really really skilled drivers. Um, and yeah, so with me and the FI Rally Star team, uh, we are all our full focus is on on this championship this year, but. Okay. In, in between the rounds of the FIA rally that FIA rally start providing the gen, junior WRC, like I'm sure we we like I, I need to put together like an another series of events, you know, basically just to learn and gain experience. You know, I'm still new to the sport, and um, I'm looking also to now my next event that I'm looking at is a rally in Ireland, uh, which is on tarmac. You know, uh, okay. the next round of the junior world rally championship is in Croatia and that's a tarmac event. So just, you know, everything is to do the best in the junior world rally championship this year, because with our program, uh, this is the first year in the junior WRC. So last year there were six drivers in FIA rally star. And at the end of last year, they picked the top four that went into the junior world rally championship this year. And at the end of this year, they take the top three that go into a second year into the, in the junior WRC. Um, with the hopes to go and and chase yeah. for the champs and win it, you know. Um, yeah, that's the that's the plan. So, you know? so, so I understand the the rally start team is basically a full on support team that'll that'll basically it's a full on factory team that you you get everything that the factory guys would get. It's now just the team that like the the their criteria of joining the team was this competition to to get in there. Exactly. Yeah. No. It's a. Uh... It's amazing. It's the hugest opportunity, you know, to be a part of this team is just incredible. Um, yeah, it, it's mad, you know. And the, and the the rallies outside, you were mentioning that you know doing a small rallies to do like basically fill up your your skill set of the terrains that you've you've rode, um, rode on. Is that now part of the rally star team, or is that now on your own in your own team that you you were doing from that side? So those events will be actually personally. Uh, like sponsored by myself and my family, you know, and we actually okay. 
trying to find sponsors mm. to be able to help because you know, it's uh, yeah it's obviously it's, it's really expensive but it's mm. really crucial time you know to go out and and compete and and learn um so yeah that'll be out of uh, my own family and sponsors that i can find to to do that you know Exactly. And, and, but it's actually such a, you've got the, I think you've got the perfect mindset to attack it because I remember watching a video of Leah Block and she was also saying that when people are asking her, why does she do so many types of racing? Like she's in trophy tracks and then she's here and then she's in rally cars and then road cars. And she was saying she's filling up her mental notebook of the types of cars, terrains, how this feels, that feels and stuff like that. Now, you're always you building that up. You, that's that would be the next rally with your seventh or sixth rally that you've ever done. So you've slowly filling up that roadbook of okay, cool. I've got these terrains about. I know kind of what to do here. I know what to do there, and and just building on from there. It's exactly. And even last year, I did other types of events like hill climbs. You know, I did a hill climb, mm -hmm. then uh, did like a, a sprint, a sprint event. You know, like a, around a short course. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, all, all types of things that are, are different, you know, like another single venue e events, like, and um, it's all just to grow your brain, you know, and, yeah. and uh, yeah, like basically just learn as much as you can. So, so now do you get to get to rub shoulders with like, obviously the rounds, there's certain rounds with the junior WRC is, ex is the same round as the d normal WRC guys. And then you guys basically ride on the same terrain and the same uh, stages and everything like that. Like, what is your... Your, your, how, well, how do you learn from basically from those guys? Because obviously this team is like, okay, push for results, but more focused on, okay, let's see what these guys could do in that trade. So how do you balance the thing of, okay, I need to learn, but I also need to show these guys because I want a factory deal for next year. It, it, that is, uh, yeah, exactly. So true, you know, you learn and push as much as you can, but at the same time, mm. like to learn, you need to be consistent and get the miles in, you know, you can't, be really fast on one stage and then crash out and then lose yeah. the rest of the rally, you know, and that experience that you won't get because you, you're not driving because you're, you're out, you know? So yeah. you really have to think about it as, as you were saying, you know, and find a good balance of, you know, pushing, get showing some really good speed. And then at the same time being really consistent and in rally, that's also how you find the results, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah, I know there's, there's definitely a, 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 a balance that you have to find with that. It was um, so I, I work quite a lot with on the media side with uh, Red Light Motorsports and Terence has this saying, the guy that uh, that that gets a good result is a guy that doesn't have to step out of his car. And I believe that's the same with you guys. Like if you, 99% of the guys, the guys lose in half an hour, all of a sudden you see his, oh, he's fighting for a top 10 and now he's at the back of the field and it's all because of the puncher. It's a simple thing of, oh, okay, cool, they have to step out of the car. So it's a balance of, staying like keeping your cool and then knowing when to push and then finding those limits in, the, in that sense exactly like as soon as you do step out the car and rally you you lose probably a, like yeah. at least two minutes you know and exactly. uh, when you're fighting for seconds you just drop down the whole rank so that's where the consistency yeah. that is is massive you know it, it really it has to be almost seen as the foundation and then you build everything on top of that you know exactly and so now to, to go even uh, further back then, then you obviously you won the rally star and you got into this team now but where did the the in, like the, the the flame started for rally because like if you, if you heard like you do a bunch of stuff you always you were motor riding on the like moto and you you i see if you've carted the uh, race and carts and stuff as well why specifically rally what was that that opportunity and that flame that because even on the on the sim side you were Okay, well, cool. I'm focused on doing rally and dirt and and stuff like that. So, what is the way that that all start? So, like, for me, the 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 love for rally would have actually started way back when I was a, a like a, a little kid, you know, and it would have started on on PlayStation actually. And yeah, me that like separated rally from other like uh like circuit racing and and other motorsports was just the pure adventure behind, and. Everything is new. Every time you, you you do a stage, it's new, you know, and you're listening to pace notes uh, and working together with your co-driver. It's just, it's really, there's such a huge adventure side of the sport. And mm -hmm. uh, you, like, there's just so many elements to it. You also, you're out in, in nature, you know, you driving on, on normal public roads as fast as you can from point, what, point A to point B. It's a time, you know, it's just you, the car, co-driver and the road. It's, there's, there's nothing else to really worry about yeah. except for extracting the, off and um, yeah. yeah for me it's i just 
find it incredible, you know, and the more that I've learned about the sport, uh, the more that I like just am enjoying, it, you know, but I think that my upbringing in motocross, uh, open the uh, it really gave me a good seat for the car. You know, I got in and I had natural car control and that's probably just from, you know, traction on the motocross bike and the, the weight and, and leaning into corners and everything like that. And, uh, um, then also, yeah, got into karting actually once I won Rally Star to get okay. kart for wheels. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. So everything here is mainly it's for Rally. I see. No, so that, that's, that's, that's a bit, I, it makes actually sense about the whole bike thing. Cause I, I think about like the different terrains and you kind of slowly, but surely you start to know, okay, cool. You see the terrain and you feel how your bike reacts to it and that, and like, so you saying that those skills basically transferred into rally as well, where you're starting to feel the four wheels, but you know, you have all back wheel, like a whole four, a car that, that you basically get to feel the car around that. Exactly. Yeah. The step is you. The looking for surface changes, right? you're looking at you like, oh, that surface, you need to change thing on the driving you know, or just be aware there's like the understeer, oversteer on certain part. And it's like the motor, but you're also looking at what's coming up and feeling it as a, so it's, that really, really helps. No, no, dude, it, 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 but it, it, just the way you, the passion that you have for it, like you, like you explaining where that passion started, you can see how your face lights up when you start to talk about it. And I think that's what you get with any rally fan. If you get a guy that like, oh, he doesn't like stage rally because it's like his pace notes and everything and like, and you have him a watch, like just proper racing. I, I can tell you, no, you can take a guy and what, get him the latest WRC highlights and watch those highlights and then and afterwards you'll convert him into a fan because it's it's just so, like the, if you just, the, uh, the, I actually listened to a podcast the other day where they were referring to how dedicated rally fans were and you can see the guys like in rally coats in, okay, so Africa it's not that cold and that, but compared to Europe uh, racing, but in Europe it's like, it's snowing, it's like muddy, it's the in the forest, it's not a nice little track or with the stadium and this and everything, and those guys are camping there, waiting for a car, the guy to come flying past, and then everyone is super stoked, and then that's, that's, that's it, it's crazy. Exactly, and a perfect example of that would just have been last weekend in Sweden, you know, we had nights in the, or minus, yeah. You know, and so they are stay with fun, play, be driving to the set. It's just the mad atmosphere. Like, yeah. that's that's another thing about rally. It's just, it's raw as it gets, mm -hmm. you know. Like, you, it's a wild sport. Yeah. And uh, and then the fans are, are are massively into it and they create such a huge atmosphere around the stage, you know. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the thing from the driver's side to mechanics to everyone. It's all a passion thing. Like if you're not passionate about it, like even on the mechanic side, like I've seen it on the rally. I remember the rally raid side. Um, we were, it was in, in Barais, there was a rally and it was raining. It was like hissing with rain. Like it looked like motorboats, the guy, the, the trucks driving and that mechanics were all soaking, but the cars came in, everyone, like boom, the drivers went in, got, got changed, did what they need to do. Everything, everyone just working, working, working. And there was stuff and all, but afterwards it was like, okay, cool. We got that. It was so exciting. Such a cool thing. Even like me on the media side for them, like going out into the rain, finding the spots and looking for cool shots and whatever. But it's all a passion thing. Because if you're not passionate about it, who else would want to go into the thick of the mud, like halfway get stuck with your bucky there somewhere and then still be able and basically catch a guy aquaplaning past you. <laughs> and it's just for that. So it's all a passion thing. And, and I think that's what, that's what hooks people to motorsport in that because it is so exciting. That exhilarating feeling of someone driving the way and in a sense, a little bit of relatability because that, I think that's like the thing that I enjoy about rally because you see cars that like, the, the, I'm not saying you can buy the exact car that you're racing with, but the shape of that car, I can go to the street just around the corner and I'll see a, a, a few Fiesta standing there and people are like, okay, but like that car is rallying there. I'm driving this car. I remember I, I bought my first, um, in my first Fiesta, because the, the, that was the Fiesta that Ken Block was rallying, and that was the same. I was like, I, I need that one, even if it's a fourteen hundred. I don't care. I want to buy that specific car because it's a rally car. Exactly. You know, that's uh, the same. Like our oh, Fiesta Rally Three, it also just looks like a, a Ford Fiesta. I mean, it must be like, oh, yeah, damn, that's a cool car. You know, <laughs> exactly, exactly. It, 
yeah, it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome across yeah. like so many areas. You know, I'm just, I, I, I love the sport so much, you know, and it's, yeah, it, it, the mechanics are also just absolute machines. Like we were testing in Norway, it was minus like 29 degrees and the car will come in for service. And, and these guys just, you know, like, like, I don't know, frozen yeah. noses, everything yeah. will just, and just start grafting on the car. And it's just like, what? these guys are machines, you know, it's, in it, it's, it's insane. It is insane. And that's, uh, I think that's the part that people usually miss um, on the rally side as well is the engineering that goes into it. Yes, like these average cars that are driving on the roads, they, they're all good in that. But the engineering side of actually take this, you, you can just go to your, your Instagram reels and see how many times you've jumped that car. And if you jump a normal car in that sense, like, yeah, I don't think it's going to end that well. But like the engineering side of that, and that's the part that it also could like another field, a massive rabbit hole that you can go down yeah. in the tech side of behind the cars that is, that is insane. But now from you, from a driver's side, how do you, um, what do you do to basically learn that side? And Because you've seen many of the times where the guys are parked next to the road and something broke and whatever, and they're busy trying to fix and bend stuff and body. But, but like, what, what is your... Um, because obviously you're learning the driving side, but what do you do to learn more on the mechanical and engineering side? Or do you keep that to them? No, no. So as a driver and a co-driver, you actually, you need to know how to do like some basic mechanical things, you know. Um, and we have tools in our car for if any problems uh, happen, you know, we've got spare parts for like the spare wishbones, you know, we've got uh, like your spare uh, bolts for the, the, the car and everything. And um like sometimes you have to be able to fix it and luckily i actually grew up with like a quite a good mm -hmm. i call upbringing from my dad you know yeah. uh with the motocross bikes we would uh change like like our own pistons you know like i can open up suspension and and fully change like everything inside you know like a uh, the, me the mechanical mind is there you know and then also we get like coached or, or trained by m sport poland uh mm -hmm. the car manufacturer for the rally three yeah. uh, they like you know showing us a few things to how to change this on the car how to fix that and as well as like we've got like a like a driver's book that's just got full full of information of things that if you needed to change how you do it you know and at the same time like we would also play with like uh settings on the car and like mm -hmm. on a suspension and stuff uh on road sections if we feel like oh you know i'm not too happy with the cars doing here we'll be like okay how can we fix this we'll chat to the engineer they'll be like uh, maybe try to change two clicks here, like one there and see how that feels in the next stage, you know? So like, uh, yeah. there's, there's, there's lots of things that you can do, you know, to fine tune the yeah. car as well. Um, and yeah, so that takes like, you know, you have to you feeling what the car is doing and what you actually mm -hmm. wanted to do, you know? No, no, that's, that's the leads to my second question actually, which, which is fits in perfectly is, uh, how do you. Uh, justify a change and 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 take it because like for, like give me if, let me give you an example like for instance i won't go and make suspension recommendations on my bike because 99 percent of the time it's me being fatigued or me not doing what i supposed to do and it's lack of skill that's that's that may be kong, oh, the, the, the put, puts to on instead of it's a mechanical thing it's it's not the suspension it's not the tires it's actually just me doing something wrong uh now you being an inexperienced rally driver like this is your fifth rally like how do you like guide that that compass of okay you know what i think we need to change the suspension or we need to change these settings or we need to have this tires and that like so how do you correlate how do you decide okay cool i think this is definitely something mechanical that needs to be changed so the most of the changes that we'll make would be in the pre-event test of a, of a rally you know we'll drive the road many times you know mm -hmm. and uh and also Every driver would have their own, you know, driving style or driving characteristics. And like, you know, if a car turns in a certain way, like that, that I like, it would be different to maybe another driver, you know, and like if the car is understeering or I don't actually have the feeling of the, of like the movements that I make, you know, you'll change things mainly on the suspension and the, and the anti-roll bars, but it's mainly just so that you get the feeling of okay yeah. me and the sport are one you know we chat in the same language and uh it's like yeah when you get it right there's a really big difference you know to when it's not set up to you and uh it all like, as a rally driver you have so much feeling on like how much the car's rolling you know how much traction you have on the on the wheels here because like um you're trying to maximize everything out of the car all the time and uh you can feel when something's holding you back a bit you know 
No, it, it translates, and I think it's 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 awesome because now you that the, that's what you're talking about. But the natural talent and that side is because that connection is. It feels to me like that connection with you is already there. You can kind of sit in the car and you go around the corner. I'm like, I'm not feeling this. I'm not feeling that. And you you kind of get a get a like a feel for where you are, and, and that's and then it makes sense. It's like you starting off like this, already getting um, a top ten finishes and rallies, and for, like having that feel. I think it's a really insane progression that's going to happen from uh, from here on forward. Yeah, exactly. The the progression has been absolutely insane to here now. You know. And I feel like, yeah, we, we, we're aiming to, yeah, just, just go up and up and up. You know, the, the leap is, is coming more and more. So, um, it, it really is incredible. And especially to set some of those stage times where you can see it, you know, and then eventually it'll be like, like a day, you know, will be, good, you know, like, uh, and then a rally will be good, you know? And, and so it's like, just basically now connecting all the dots, you know, working out, I I'm doing well here, you know, why I'm not doing well there. And yeah. then just you know, literally, like, I don't know, using all of your brain to figure out how you can like, get the most out of your driving, you know, and perform at a high level all of the time for an entire rally over four days, you know. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, it is incredible to have this progression so far, you know. No. Oh, uh, also on the on the other flip side of that, it's obviously you're getting the mechanical training and you get the the, the driving training and you're filling up your road book full of, of the different terrains that you rode on. But on the fitness side, now obviously you um like traveling a lot, you at the rallies and stuff like that. How do you, as a race driver, a rally driver, keep your fitness on that level while traveling and that because yeah, that's a main part, a big, a big part of of of, of rally. Now it is a massive part and it can get really tricky with all the traveling, you know, because, uh, you literally just, when it becomes to an event, you know, you're so busy and you're always mm. moving there, you know, and, uh, like the fitness thing is like, what I do is mainly before the season is you'll create like a really good base fitness, you know, like, mm. uh, I actually, I've, I've done like lots of trail running in my life. I've done the 13 peaks challenge, you know, have, have you heard of 13 peaks? Okay. No, I don't know. I haven't though. It's like, yeah. Uh, that's like basically a challenge where you you peak 13 of the mountains in the Table Mountain Reserve. You know, yeah. uh, it's like 110 k's of running and like a, it's over 6,000 meters of, of elevation. You know, and uh, like like I've done that in 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 five days. You know, and, and motocross was a huge part of the fitness. You know, oh. that sport. If you are fit, you know, you, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, you, cannot, you cannot actually ride. You know, so one hundred percent. Yeah, and you'll know. You know, it's crazy. How, how much arms going, you know. And rally is the same, but it's the same in a different way. It's the same that we have events over four days, you know, and within that, those four days, you do not stop, you know, and you're always trying to like after the stage, when you're done driving, you know, you have to get to the next one or you have to go at the end of the day, you know, watch some videos on, on the the stages for tomorrow, you know, and, and make sure that your pace notes are perfect, you know, so it's the endurance side of things that is huge. And then. As well as other racing things, your 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 core, your your neck, you know, your arms, and that can all be trained with like body weight workouts or like yeah. specialist like gym workouts. You know, but yeah, basically, like try workout like every day, and uh, then focus not only on the cardio but on you know the muscle groups that you need the most, and even mm. your you know uh, to stay up is is really important. So you mentioned now about the that were previously. So the one question I actually had. So obviously the driving skill can be translated from the sim to to racing. That, that that's not not the easy part, but that's a, the most relatable part to go from one to the other. But now the the one uh, thing that you probably like had to get used to was the the navigation side and having pace notes and a, a new, brand new navigator and stuff. That so because I'm, I'm like I haven't I haven't uh, played one of the rally games in a while, so I'm not sure how accurate the pace notes are and the road books and stuff like that are. But how did you learn those type of skills to to translate from sim to to now full to like actual race uh, rally rally riding? Yeah, I think that, that the pace would have been probably one of the biggest like new skills that I had to learn last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically just, it came like tons of, tons of on the note I've made. Okay. I even I went over my co-driver on the Isle of Mountain, which had like, mm -hmm. like it's a, like single lane tarmac, but yeah. with elevate press, you know, if you can make taste notes on model, you can take this anywhere. And, We'd go out every day and we'd make notes, you know, we'd, and, and Cam, he's actually 
you know, he's a European champion code fiber. So he gave really good advice, uh, maybe try, uh, or uh, I don't know how, how much that's working or, oh, that's, that, that, that's, that's pretty cool. You know, I haven't heard that before. Mm -hmm. And they find unique notes, you know, and you're yeah. watching on boards and everything like that. But yeah, it's just to like, now I'm finally feeling that I've got the, like, I'm, I've got the consistency right on the notes. And when I go to stage, it's like full confidence of, yeah, okay, that's a six, mm -hmm. right? But I'm not, you know, and, yeah. and that sort of thing. It's like, uh, it's, it's, it's really cool. And that flow that you can get with the co-driver as well during the stage mm -hmm. is like, it's the most amazing feeling because you both want, you want to do well as much as each other, you know, what you both want it as bad as each other it really creates yeah. such a connection in the car that, uh, yeah, I know you like, it's, it's really unique. It's, it's, it's amazing, man. Mm -hmm. No, because you. You see that develop in, in, in how many famous drivers that are out there, or, or like rally, like winning rally, like teams in that sense. You see the connection between the navigator and the driver. Like it's a, it's a unspoken. And sometimes like it's a, such a weird one. I've seen now my experience on the rally raid side, like two guys that you, like those guys will, like would normally won't be even friends, but they've got such a cool connection because of that time spent in the car. And, I've heard so many guys said that, that hours in the car you spend and you develop that uh, a weird type of bond with that person where you trust it because if that guy says you don't have to lift, you're not lifting because you have to go flat out through there. And if he say, if he calls a six left, it's six left. You're gonna you're not gonna go. Like, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you uh, like are you really? You can't hesitate like that because that's seconds that you miss on that. So, so every time you like you 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 you, you like, don't like trust him that much, then it's you losing time. So you have to fully commit on that. Yeah incredible the trust is in, in insane you know lots mm -hmm. of like yeah, lots of people talk about how tight a driver and co driver are you know it's like a, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like there's like a relationship on another level you know yeah. <laughs> really you're flying through forest and he trusts as much as you trust him so it, it's yeah. it's uh, it is so unique you know um yeah. Yeah. And I'm talking about the time that you spend in the car. Like I know certain drivers have like certain rituals that they do or certain little quirks or maybe you do. You want a certain call when something happens. Do you have any of those yet that we like, okay, cool. Well, I'm, I need my navigator or co-driver to do this and I need, like, need to do these rituals before I get in the car or anything like that? Yeah, definitely. It's like uh, the prep is something that I find really hard to get in the, in the zone. Like as you'll put on, on, on stage mode to go into the stage, you, you have to put yourself yep. in stage, you know, so like, like I, you know, have a certain series of things, like I'll put my right glove on for my left glove, you know, and, and things like that. And I pull the way and we the stage, you know, same process. And then when we're there, it's like, okay, you know, let's do this. And, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, you, that pre-performance I feel really helps, you know. It's, uh, I think it's like a, a start ritual for a for a, a, a pilot on a on a on an airplane. You know, okay, I have to go through these steps, and now it's race mode. And then then the countdown happens, and then you go, and then you switch. Like as soon as you cross it, then you. And I, I, I like so I've I've always said to people, I watch more onboard rally footage than anything else. Like I, like I'll sit at night, like one o'clock in the morning, watching in car rally footage of some WRC race. I don't know how long ago, whatever, because it's just. It, it fascinates me at the speed and everything happening in that. But you can, it's like a, you can, if you watch the guy's faces, even in the recent WLC, the guys with the open face helmets and that, you, like you see the face, you know, the face, and as soon as they cross the finish, you, it's like a switch that just goes back off. And then they're like, okay, cool. Now they can move and now they're out of the flow again, but now they could just continue. And it's, and you, you see that switch go on and you see guys when they're not in that, when you're like, okay, this guy's usually like up in the top fives or whatever. And all of a sudden he's like way behind. And then you watch his in car and you can see him like probably not focused or watching around or like shaking or anything in that matter. And you're like, okay, well, that guy's obviously not, not focused on the flow or anything like that. So it's, it's actually probably the best to have something to get you. Okay. I do this, I do this, I do this, then I race. Exactly. Exactly. The really have to be so in tune because like everything happens so far in, in red. Um, that's yeah if you're not on it you you will either you know really not do a good time or you'll make a mistake you know so mm -hmm. it's I believe it's bloody important you know exactly but dude so so you saying now you're currently at scotland uh what are you what are you busy doing in, in scotland at the moment so 
Yeah, I'm actually like a, I'm literally just in Scotland for a little bit. I am yeah, at my coach at the moment and then going to Ireland in uh, very soon for an event. Right? So, but basically just like instead of coming all the way back to South Africa before coming mm -hmm. back, you know, to, to base myself here, you know, I'm going to see my co-driver tomorrow. You know, he lives this side as well. So okay. like my little base, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, then, yeah, I just basically get ready for creation, you know, after mm -hmm. Ireland, it's a few, we back on the, on the time and, uh, in the Ford Fit Rally 3. So yes. just using it as best as possible, you know? Also, dude, no, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited for your journey, dude. Uh, when I saw your, your content and stuff like that, I, I forwarded it to so many people. I'm like, look, we've got a South African that's on its way. Like just back this guy, go to follow this guy. And, and that's, that's so important because I see, you now. Obviously, okay, there's that other and another topic that I always touch with 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 people and 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 that being athletes and and pro fun havers in that sense because like you're doing like red you're now a, like a professional rally driver and you're working towards getting at a full time gig at a institute. But how important is the social side to you? Because now obviously you're building a platform and the reels that you're putting up and and you're constantly feeding that that algorithm. But now like what is how does that play a role in this whole in this whole movement going forward then so i think said that like the main reason now for like you know for media and things to i don't know get get like south africa you know behind me it's like mm. such a country in the way that like if south africa sees someone doing well they are all just so stoked you know, proud yeah to be south african and like you know uh, go and support this guy and just only wish wish them the best you know yeah. and in to, to you know get backing from brands and sponsors you know it's like it's not a sport that you know you can do alone or out of yeah. own, you know so that, it, those are the, the two main reasons you know why i would you know have social media and mm -hmm. uh focus and then but yeah it's something that i think i need to focus on more at the moment i've just been at the moment just focusing on learning as much as i can and and getting yeah. as, like as i can uh but yeah, it's, it's it's bloody important, you know, to get sponsors and the funds to to keep learning, you know, to keep racing. You know? Yeah, because obviously, like it, it, it's perfect now because now you you in the the, the FIA um, the star star rally team and you're working on that side. But getting the backing and the social following as well. Like I've always said to people, um, like yes, okay, if you join a certain team, and I think in rally it's a little bit different, but it's still there's you need if you can bring your the social element to it as well, it just adds to especially in Europe. But South Africa maybe not as much. Like uh, I always say to the motocross guys and the and the and our bike racing guys, like having one of our local guys be on a certain bike is not going to go get people to maybe go and buy that bike it might but if you see international guys like i'm i'm saying no, like i bought the fiesta because ken block had a fiesta and and if that's the type of pull you had it that only happens because we follow him and see him on socials and if we if not just for the fact that we like you said south africa kid that's why i'm like if i see one of your reels and your, your race up that i'm like share this reel go and follow this guy support this guy and I, I sent it to a few news stuff as well. I'm like, look, another South African doing good. Like, hey, go and follow this guy. So because it is such a rarity for us in South Africa. Like recently, we've got a bunch of athletes that are doing good. And then, like you said, the whole nation gets behind it. But it's the motorsport is still like, I mean, we have world class guys racing in in, in, in the enduro side and uh, in the um, like enduro racing, like Lamar style racing and whatever. But like there's very few people that know them and so and follow them and support them unless you like have a personal connection with them in South Africa. Like no one's gonna know. Okay, but the Max Mod is actually like doing flipping well in Sweden, busy ripping stuff, so putting the South African flag in there, which is awesome. So I, I really wish like, that's why I said to you like whatever little bit of exposure I can give you an extra on the podcast side. Like let's let's do it. Let's let's. I want to firstly pick your brain about a few things and let's see if we can help out and and get you noticed with anybody in the in the industry that can help your racing career no kevin i really really hey um thank you so much. It, and it's also a cool podcast thing that you're doing you know yeah, thanks <laughs> it really is cool because what you do also have to you know mm -hmm. and the more you enjoy yourself the the better you get out of naturally you know and things like that yeah. the better you so now it's actually it's it's awesome and uh i'm also mm -hmm. so to more south africans you know sharing like the the reels and things like that on mm -hmm. sweden yeah people are 
are getting proud, you know, like and, and noticing uh, that there's a yeah. South African record again, and uh, it'll only get better, you know, it'll only it'll only get better. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I really appreciate it, and I'm keen to grow it, you know. Dude, no, I'm I'm super stoked on the journey. So to to have a nice end off now for everyone who is listening, and when and the podcast on Spotify and on YouTube, I'll put all your links um, to your socials and stuff on the um, on the descriptions. So if anybody wants to go and follow you and, and join your journey, they can. But if you can give a shout out, firstly, where like what is your next next few steps, and then where can people follow you uh, follow your journey and what what platforms and what usernames can they use? So yeah, I'd shout out that. Uh, like my two steps basically prepping for Rally Croatia uh, which is the top and uh, I'm looking to do an event in Ireland to gain experience on that surface and uh, the shower would be you know I'm at this moment I'm looking for support from you know people and, and you know pull together the funds to be able to do this and then you know after that really you know go into Croatia and uh, and, and have a good rally you know and you know rep that South African flag on a world level again uh, multiple times this year, I just really grew like whoever wants to back and get will eat more than open chat and uh, like mm. doing you know taking this flag to the to the top step you know perfect dude now I'm I'm super stoked in your journey and I can bet you anybody that sees your content and follows you and that will will be stoked to see a South African rep that and dude. All the odds consistency and you, you've got the right passion and attitude towards it. So I'm, I'm super optimistic on your journey. So I'm really stoked to see it and see the progression. And I also think like, like what I said, you had mentioned about the pro fun ever side. I think don't, don't lose that element. Cause you see so many guys get like, they, they go typical Ryan Filippota where they hate their jobs every day. And it, and then it becomes like, they're very good at what they do, but they hate it. And you don't, you never want to lose that. Cause then we'll see another rising star. And then you'll just like that star fur quickly burns out because like, there's no passion left in that. And you've got the passion and I, I'm really stoked on the journey. dude. All right. Thank you so much, Kevin. I really appreciate it. And it was a good Anytime, dude. But have a good one. And yeah, I'm not going to keep you up too much further. You probably have some resting to do and some in-cars to watch and that. But yeah, even anyone that wants to follow you, just go and give this guy a follow. Go and support him. Even if you can't contribute to your rally, just a follow and a like on a post will do so much more. That's true, you know. Uh, thanks so much. And yeah, let's, let's do this stuff. Let's do this with South Africa. Okay. Wonderful, man. Say, dude. Now I'll, uh, we'll catch up later on, and we'll see. Uh, yeah, let's follow your journey, and then maybe at the end of the year we'll uh, see. We'll have a podcast to see we, what team you signed with for the for the day for next year. <laughs> okay, perfect, man. Thanks so much, and uh, enjoy the rest of the cool, Okay, you too, bro. Cheers, cheers.